Hello everyone, this is Tim Donahue from DuraSpace and today I'm going to give you an update on the DSpace roadmap and recent vision discussions that have been going on over the last few months in the DSpace community. But before I get started, I do want to mention I hope you're having a wonderful time in beautiful Geneva. I wish I could have joined you, but I feel honored to have the opportunity to present virtually to all of you today. So here's the topics I plan to cover in this presentation. Uh, the main point of this presentation is really to kind of give you all an overview of the DSpace three to five year vision discussions that have been uh, going on that happened in a recent meeting and have been going on since that meeting. But in order to get there, I really do feel to the need to touch back upon the DSpace 3 release that came out this past year and talk a little bit also about the upcoming 4.0 release. So it'll be a little bit about everything regarding the technology roadmap as well as getting into the long-term vision discussions which have just kicked off recently and will be continuing over the next few months. So first and foremost though, if you haven't heard much about DSpace 3, these are the main uh, flashy features that we like to advertise. Um, Basically, to go through a couple of them here, uh, there's a brand new OAI PMH interface that's completely rewritten and lots of new enhancements, including support for open air and similar. Um, we have uh, advanced embargo support uh, inside the submission process, so much more embargo related features that you can add into your submission interface. There's also type-based submissions to mention there, uh, where you can have different submission interfaces based on whether you're submitting a dissertation or a journal article or even just a white paper. We also have beta versions of a mobile interface for, for any sort of mobile devices, cell phones, um, we also have a very early version of item level versioning so that you can actually version individual items and roll back changes if you need to undo something. There's many other improvements and major enhancements within DSpace 3. So if you want to learn more about what all is in DSpace 3, I'd encourage you to visit the URL at the bottom of this slide, which will bring you off to the DSpace 3.0 release notes, or you can just search 3.0 release notes in, um, in Google to actually jump right to that particular page. The other thing I did want to mention about DSpace 3 though is it's actually the first release that we managed via a release team. In the past we always, um, the committers team would always just have a single release coordinator or possibly two people helping to coordinate the release, keep things on schedule, make sure we're all on the same page with regards to the release. Um, we in recent years have realized that it's getting to be too big of a job for just one person. So we decided to come up with this concept of having a release team. And this this past release with DSpace 3, we had these four individuals step up and did an absolutely wonderful job with it. So I just wanted to uh, really recognize their achievement here in DSpace 3. And I should mention that we'll be doing the same sort of thing in DSpace 4 because of the success of this release team process. And speaking of DSpace 4, to touch briefly on that, if you haven't heard yet, there will be a 4.0 release um, late, later this year with new features, but those features are still in the works. We're still trying to decide what will be ready in time um, and what may need to wait for a future release after that. But some of the things that could be in DSpace 4.0 include a possible early version of a REST API for developers and for building little JavaScript widgets against or whatever else you want to do with that. There may be DOI support to go along with the normal handle server support in DSpace so that you could use DOIs instead of handles if you felt the need. Um, there's also maybe um, some SWORD enhancements. There's been a lot of work in the SWORD, especially the version 2 of SWORD um, in the past year or so, and many enhancements may be coming in DSpace 4.0. But um, we really don't have a full list of all the features yet. That's still uh, coming up in the next few months. We'll get a much better handle of what exactly will be ready in DSpace 4. And if you want to follow along with the discussion around DSpace 4, or even offer up some features that you may have helped to build yourself at your own institution, there's a URL down at the bottom of, of this slide here that'll bring you off to our 
DSpace 4 release notes, which is really where we're gathering all the information about what we think can make it in time for DSpace 4, what sort of features we think are going to be in there, what sort of improvements, enhancements, and bug fixes. So keep an eye on that page and also just keep an eye on the mailing list and you'll be seeing much more information about DSpace 4 in the coming weeks and months. But as I mentioned, the main purpose of this particular talk today is I really wanted to give an overview of what's going on with the um, three to five year vision discussion. You may have heard a little bit about this if you caught the blog post um, that went up on the DuraSpace blog and that is the URL at the bottom of this particular slide. But essentially back in May in Chicago we had uh, 10 DSpace stakeholder institutions that, uh, that met in Chicago and talked around uh, trying to come up with a common three to five year vision for DSpace, just among those ten institutions. This idea actually came out of the DuraSpace Summit in Baltimore earlier this year. The idea that we wanted to see if we could um, get together a small group of institutions in a really quick manner and just see whether we could come up with a common vision around where we think the software really needs to move forward and then start to to enhance that vision and clarify that vision by getting more and more input from the broader community and making sure that we can move the software in a direction that most meets the needs of all of our community. So it is worth mentioning here that this vision really is longer term. I just mentioned the 4.0 release that will be later this year um, and this vision really doesn't have any effect on that 4.0 release. It's more longer term than that. It's really about trying to envision what DSpace may look like in three to five years or what it really should look like in order to meet the ongoing needs of all of the institutions that are using it. So what I'm going to be talking about today is really just an early draft of what this vision could look like. Out of this May meeting we came up with a lot of good brainstorms and some very rough ideas but we really didn't solidify um, a draft that we wanted to present to the community yet so I'm just giving you a very early peek into what this may look like. What we are working on in the next few weeks before open repositories is this same vision of or this same group of stakeholders is working on a vision that will be presented at open repositories and we'll actually have a discussion discussion session at that conference as well as discussions ongoing after the conference on mailing lists and on the wiki and all of that in order to get as much feedback as we can around this early version of what could be a DSpace vision going forward. So that early draft that I had mentioned really kind of came down to five main points that we could all agree upon at this meeting. And it all kind of revolved at a high level around what the goals of DSpace really should be and how it should continue to mature. Um, it's already obviously a very mature 10 year old system but we want to make sure that it can make it another 10 years, another you know, 15 years, however long, um, just to make sure that it keeps going and keeps our content safe and keeps meeting the, con the modern needs that of an IR system or whatever you want to call it. So it kind of came to these five points. The DSpace will focus on institutional repository fundamentals, but it really needs to be about modern use cases for those systems. That it needs to be lean and flexible. That it needs to include that core functionality, but it also needs to be able to be extended to meet needs that are slightly on the edges of that functionality. That people just may want to kind of hook into their system to give it a little bit of extra functionality that is really important to their institution. It also needs to be designed so that it can integrate well with other systems in the same sort of scholarly communications ecosystem or preservation ecosystem. And finally, we all felt that it was really important that it needs to be able to support low cost and hosted solutions. And I'm going to touch on each of these five points in a little bit more detail next to try and give you an idea of where these um, came out of our brainstorms at this particular meeting. So the focus on the institutional repository. 
I know that not everybody may like the phrase institutional repository, and admittedly we had a little bit of disagreement even at this meeting as to whether that's the right term, um, whether that is a dated term or whether we need something new. But we couldn't come up with anything that better described it yet at this point in time. So what we feel is that DSpace really is that IR at heart, but it's not the IR of 10 years ago. It really needs to work in modern use cases, and those use cases really have changed over the past 10 years. It's not what it's not necessarily being used for the same purposes that it may have been envisioned 10 years ago. But it's also important to note that there probably still are various edge cases around here that really we should try and implement via third-party plugins, those non-core use cases that maybe not every institution needs, but that a small subset of us may find really, really important but we could really implement those via third-party plugins rather than putting them necessarily into the core that is DSpace. So that kind of brings to the idea this lean and flexible idea of DSpace. It's really about not attempting to do or be everything to everyone. We don't want one system that does everything and that we can you know, plug every single possible use case into, whether it's the core IR use case or something else. What we're really looking towards is seeing if we can get towards a lean focused system, but we want it to be flexible enough that people can add on those edge cases via plugins to the system. So if it's really important to you, we can get a plugin, we can build one either from the committers, we could build one from a third party service provider, or you could build one in house and just plug in a little um, add on there for the DSpace system that allows you to get the functionality you need. So the third point here is really around those core IR use cases. What are they? And we had a lot of brainstorming in this initial meeting, but obviously this is just 10 institutions and it's a much bigger um, world than all of that. The DSpace community is worldwide and really needs to involve all of us in deciding what these use cases are. And it's going to be a constant balance here between what needs to be out of the box in DSpace and what could be implemented more as a third-party plugin. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of disagreement in these cases and even amongst those 10 institutions at this initial meeting there was already a lot of disagreement as to what could fall into each of those particular buckets essentially. But it's a discussion that we need to have and that we really want to encourage in the coming months to see if we can come to, down to that lean out of the box system that can meet the majority of our needs but still allow that flexibility to allow us to plug in those third party plugins to get extra use cases that are really important to certain institutions. So the fourth point in that list was that it needs to be designed to integrate well. And this is really kind of obvious these days. We all know that standalone systems are a thing of the past. We don't want to be building all these silo systems that are difficult to get data in and data out of. So we really need to just make sure that you know going forward, um, DSpace continues to provide integration points for others to build against and continues to build its own integrations against other external systems. So we're we're continuing to meet the needs of institutions to be able to hook DSpace into their overall ecosystem, whether that's a scholarly communications ecosystem, whether that's just their institutional ecosystem, or whether that's a preservation ecosystem or something else. We need to be able to allow DSpace to play well with others. And the final point here is really around um, that support for a hosted environment. And to me, that doesn't mean that we want to only run DSpace in hosted environments or with service providers. It's more about the ability to do more things via the web UI. So what I mean by that is the you need to be able to have that web-based configuration and setup. So it needs to be easy to install, easy to set up, whether that's locally or hosted. And you need to be able to manage most things with DSpace from the user interface. So you don't need to have that direct command line access to the server. You could host it somewhere, whether that's a third party service provider, or whether that's with just your own little um, cloud storage area, or your own Amazon cloud account, or if you just want to put it on your own local machine. It doesn't matter where it's really hosted but we want to be able to allow you to do most everything from the user interface rather than having that direct server access. So 
what that kind of leads to, if you think about all those together, and this is just my opinion here, this hasn't been um, brought to everybody else yet until this particular presentation, is that DSpace starts to sound, in this three to five year vision, like a WordPress like IR. So if you think about WordPress, if you're familiar with the WordPress sort of website blogging software, it's a relatively uh, simple system to get up and running. It does a lot of hand holding to get you to install it and configure it. It kind of just works. You can also quickly spin it up like in Amazon or in your ISP or wherever. You can spin up an instance of WordPress and start working with it right away. It also has a really large active support community, which DSpace already has, of course. And WordPress has a diverse array of third-party plugins and themes, which would be something that would be really nice for DSpace to be able to offer in that sort of flexibility manner, to be able to allow this third-party environment to bubble up and allow people to share things much more easily, whether that's plugins or themes, or maybe even allow people to, to have a little bit of a, a marketplace for plugins and themes. And importantly as well, WordPress allows you to manage most everything from its web user interface, including the ability to add those plugins, to add those themes to WordPress, and to update them along the way. So this is kind of, in my mind, this seems sort of like the vision of where DSpace starts to fit into things. And again, this is just a very early draft of things. Those five points that I mentioned at the beginning um, are really just a brainstorm of these 10 institutions. And we're going to be looking towards getting more and more feedback out of this potential vision. So the next step, um, as I just kind of mentioned there, is really to try and put a proposed vision together in time for open repositories. And we'll be working on that over the next few weeks. And there will be a discussion session there where we can get immediate feedback from the attendees of that conference. We're also going to be asking for feedback via email, via the wiki. And um, as this vision starts to get closer to something that seems a little bit more finalized that we can start to work from, there will be a point where the, the sort of vision team will be collaborating back and forth with the technology team, with the committers, to start to draft up a possible technology roadmap to see, OK, does DSpace as we have it as a technology, can we start to move it towards that particular vision? Do we want to look at other sort of technologies? Do we want to how do we want to bring DSpace forward so that it can best meet the needs of all of our institutions? That's still all totally up in the air, and that's something that we're going to be trying to work out amongst ourselves and amongst the entire community so that we can all come to a consensus there. And as that technology roadmap starts to get more and more finalized, there will be a point where we're going to have to obviously go out and start to locate funding, locate volunteer developers or volunteer institutions to help lead this. Because right now, this is really just an initial vision of where we think we want to go. But we don't have the funding behind it to actually get us there. We're going to have to ask the community or look for other means to be able to fund or um, to get this moving forward. And uh, in general, um, the actual the draft vision, I should mention, at the bottom of this slide, there's a, a web link here that goes off to the that original draft vision statement. And that's where we'll be working on up until open repositories and even afterwards to start to gather more and more feedback and start to try and solidify it a little bit more so that we can begin to think more about how can we do this technically and whether or not there's things that change in the vision based on our current technology or based on what we think are, is doable in the future. So if you're interested in helping out with any of this process, as I mentioned, we just started with um, 10 initial institutions just to try and get the ball rolling, just to get something on the table that we can all start to respond to. But if you'd like to take a more active role, please feel free to contact myself or Jonathan Markow. We're still kind of the, the leaders of this initial vision team. Um, we may start to, uh, to get a, a better sort of governance model around this vision team um, in place. But if you're interested in participating, please get in touch. Uh, we'll, we'll pull you into the loop. Um, otherwise, you, we obviously 
would love for everybody to be able to provide some feedback and suggestions along the way as we start to come out with more and more drafts of what this vision could look like or what a technology roadmap could start to look like. And when the time comes around, if you have a, a part of a developer or a developer you'd be willing to donate towards helping make the vision happen, we'd love to talk to you about that or even a small amount of funding because it may, may actually come towards uh, trying to pass the hat a little bit, see who else can, can help us throw in a little bit of funding, see which institutions are willing to help collaborate to help us get this moving forward so we can really build this, this uh, vision together and make DSpace what we really want it to be. Uh, within the next three to five years and make sure it meets the needs of the next 10 years so it continues to become an even more mature um, institutional repository platform. So in closing, I, I just want to throw up my contact information here. The slides from this presentation I will be posting on my SlideShare account there so you can go and um, look at these later on if you want to. I'll probably also try and post up this particular video as well so you can watch it later on as well. But um, I'm glad to have had the opportunity to talk to you all today uh, and I hope uh, the discussion is fruitful.